I'm Dr. Jay Peacock, professor of history at Nash Community College, and this is History 132, American History 2. Almost from the beginning of its existence, the United States was an expansionist nation, but until the late 19th century, American expansion was confined to the North American continent. The West was America's empire in an age of empire. By the 1890s, however, the United States was starting to look beyond North America, and by the end of World War I in 1918, the United States had become a true world power. As with the great European imperial powers, American imperialism was motivated largely by economics. But unlike the Europeans, the United States focused more on access to foreign markets than on the acquisition of huge chunks of overseas territory. What launched the United States onto the world stage in a big way was the Spanish-American War of 1898. As a result of this conflict, the U.S. acquired control of Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippine Islands. The president who oversaw the birth of America's overseas empire was William McKinley, but it was McKinley's successor, Theodore Roosevelt, who is often credited with starting the modern presidency. Roosevelt was essentially a realist in foreign policy. He had a keen grasp of power and the limits of power. He did not hesitate to use force and bluster to achieve his foreign policy goals in the Western Hemisphere, where he regarded America as in control, but he often pursued diplomacy to achieve his goals in Asia and other parts of the world. Roosevelt's greatest achievement in foreign policy was the building of the Panama Canal. The canal opened in 1914, the year that World War I broke out in Europe. President Woodrow Wilson declared American neutrality, but Germany's use of submarine warfare against American shipping and Wilson's desire to play a major role in the peacemaking eventually dragged the United States into the conflict. April 6, 1917 was the date of the American declaration of war against Germany, but in many ways it also marked the beginning of what some have called the American century. Once the U.S. broke with its long-standing tradition of staying out of Europe's conflicts and entered the Great War, the United States committed itself to being a major player in world affairs, a role that it has continued to play for the last hundred years. Wilson led the United States into World War I, vowing to make the world safe for democracy. But almost before the ink was dry on the peace treaty, it seemed that democracy was in more danger than ever. Americans were left bitterly disillusioned by the Great War, even though the U.S. came out of the conflict in great shape compared to the other major powers. Determined not to make the same mistake again, the United States stepped back from the world stage in the 1920s and 1930s. But World War II would eventually draw in the United States as well and fully launch the U.S. into the role of international superpower. 